So today we're going to talk about the continuation of the, the chapter on crack excretion, which is, and also we're going to talk about a little bit on clinical pharmacokinetics. So this is a continuation of the previous mini lecture on drug metabolism. And we know that um, when we talk about pharmacokinetics, PK, we always refer to the four components of PK, which are ADME, the acronym or the mnemonic for the components of PK is absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. So we've previously um, talked a little bit about drug metabolism. So we are planning to to broach upon the topic of drug excretion today. So and these are some of the abbreviations that we usually use in when talking about pharmacokinetics and also pharmacology in general. So we have CL for clearance and then we have um, CP which is plasma concentration, CE um, effect site concentration which I'm not going to talk about in this um, particular lecture. And then F is for bioavailability PK from kinetics, PD for pharmacodynamics, and also volume of distribution, VD. So drugs, they are ingested or they can be given through so many routes. Maybe they might be given intravenously or they can be given subcutaneously orally, parectal, etc. And those drugs will might get metabolized in the liver or in other organs and then will be excreted in the in the urine or through the fecal route, through sweat, like in this picture, sweating so much, perspiring. And if it's on some drugs, some drugs might be excreted through this, this route. And then some drugs can be excreted through the breast milk. Some drugs may be excreted through the saliva. And also through the, some drugs can be excreted via the lungs. But most drugs are, most drugs are excreted mainly in the, in the urine. So this is the, the main pathway, the major route for drug excretion. And the body usually facilitates, makes it easier for drug excretion by making them more water soluble. And we've talked about this in the, the lecture on drug metabolism. So we know that from that lecture that um, drug metabolism in the liver, we have the phase 1 and phase 2 processes. So phase 1 is to make it more water soluble. And so when it's more water soluble, that means it's more polar. And also it's less, it's less like porphyric. Okay. So when it is less lipophilic, that means that it is less likely for the drug to get reabsorbed. Okay? And it's more likely for it to be excreted in the nephron of the kidney. So drugs may be excreted after having undergone metabolism. Okay, or it can be excreted unchanged. And the rates of metabolism and excretion 
will largely determine the dose frequency. So the rates of metabolism and also the rate of excretion of the drug will determine how frequent you want to give the drug, whether you want to give it every 10 minutes or you, have to give it, you want to give it every hour, every 3 hours, every 4 hours, every 8 hours, every 12 hours, or if it, is it going to be every day, once a day, or if you want to give it every week, or every month, or every fortnight. So this will be determined by the rates of metabolism and also the rate of excretion. And as a general rule, patients with kidney failure, kidney failure should not be prescribed drugs excreted by the kidney. Okay, that's a general rule. Okay, it's a rule of thumb. So that's what we do. And patients with liver failure should not be given drugs metabolized and excreted by the liver. Okay, but of course this will depend on the choices of drugs that we have. Okay, sometimes we have many choices. Sometimes we have a very limited um, choice of drugs. So when we have a limited choice of drug of drugs, then what we might have to do is we still have to give that particular drug, but then we have to reduce the dose of that drug. Okay. So this is um, focusing on renal drug excretion. So there are many routes of drug excretion as we have mentioned in the previous few slides. So now we are focusing on the renal route or the renal route. So the nephron, as you still probably remember from your physiology lectures, is the functional excretory unit of the kidney. So we have the Bowman capsule here, and then we have the proximal convoluted tubule, and then the descending limb of Henle, and then we have the loop of Henle, and then the ascending limb of Henle. Okay. And then we have the distal convoluted tubule. And then finally the collecting duct. And we can see that adjacent to the, to the nephron, we can have the, so adjacent to this um, path or lumen, you have the arterioles, the blood supply. And so with the blood supply, so it's easy for the process of um, secretion and reabsorption of drugs and other materials, other chemicals in the, in the lumen. So some, some drugs can be excreted into the lumen and some might be reabsorbed into the, the blood. Okay. So that, again, this is another um, cartoon showing the same um, diagram showing the same thing as previously mentioned in the previous slide so we know that there is filtration here and then we know that the filtrate which contains waters um, ions and substances below the molecular weight of 5000 deltons will pass into the real tubule okay, it will pass into here so if it's it's larger than 5,000 deltons, it will not get ultrafiltrated here. But if it's smaller than 5,000 deltons, then it won't, it will get, it will filtrate, get filtrated here. And then there's a chance for reabsorption of water here, reabsorption of sodium and chloride. And then if not, if it's not reabsorbed, then it will just go pass through here until it reaches the collecting duct. So most will be reabsorbed, okay, the smaller particles will be reabsorbed and returned to the venous blood and some will be finally passing through the collecting duct and then drains into the ureter and then finally gets excreted in the urine.
So that's about the excretion through the urine. Next is the elimination or the excretion of the um, elimination meaning um, the, the metabolism and excretion of the drug via the bile, via the bile route. So some drugs pass through the liver unchanged and are excreted in the bile. So from the bile, okay, the bile will enter the digestive tract. Okay, it goes through the duodenum and then through the terminal ileum and from there it's, it gets either it goes through the, the the ascending colon and then to the transverse colon, descending colon and then to the rectum and then to the anus. Can go through that pathway, or alternatively, it can be reabsorbed into the bloodstream. Okay, some will get reabsorbed into the bloodstream, and then get re recycled again, passes through the liver again. Okay. So other drugs are converted to metabolites in the liver. So this is another pathway it can be converted to metabolites. Okay, and then excreted again into the in the bile. So again, and these metabolites may be excreted in the feces, or it can be converted back to the drug. Okay, it can be converted back to the original drug, which is then reabsorbed into the bloodstream and recycled. Okay, just as shown in this picture. So the bile can go to the duodenum, so the metabolite might go here and then get recycled, or it can can get excreted by the feces. Next, we're going to talk about um, clinical pharmacokinetics, a little bit about the basics of clinical PK. So the first concept is um, the concept of steady state. So this occurs when the amount of drug, the amount of drug administered during the dosage interval equals the amount of drug eliminated during the dosage interval. Okay, for example, if the dosage interval is eight hours, okay, and we gave during this eight hours a total of amount of X grams of drug A, for example. And then the total of drug eliminated during this interval, during this entire 8 hours, is Y gram. So when X is equal to Y, okay, that's when we say that we have reached the steady state. So this will depend on the half-life of the drug. So the half-life of the drug will determine when steady state happens. Okay. So we'll talk about further about this in the next few slides. And a loading dose, a loading dose, meaning a higher amount of dose which is usually given as a bolus or increased frequency of initial doses is used to achieve a steady state more rapidly. Okay. So in order for us to reach a steady state, to reach a level, to reach a level when X is equal to Y, the amount of drug administered is equal to the amount of drug eliminated during the dosage interval. So we might give a loading dose. So we give a, a high bolus dose. We have a high dose, a higher dose than usual of a bolus dose. Or we increase the frequency of the initial doses. For example, if we usually give the drugs every 8 hours, then we might give the drug every 6 hours in the initial part. So that we reach, we reach the steady state faster. 